Hello there and welcome to part 5 of this tutorial series in which we're going to go through the last part of Piotrowski's F-score related to operating efficiency. If you've seen the videos before, you already know what to expect. Um, we're going to create a score, we're going to calculate different ratios and that will depend of course on the company. The score will range in this case between 0 and 2 for the operating efficiency. So first thing we need to define operating efficiency score, which at the beginning it would be set to zero. I'm going to com copy this and I will add it as part of a new function, which would be operating efficiency. And of course we need to import it properly within the function so we can modify the operating efficiency score accordingly. And we can uncomment this last last piece of the puzzle of Piotrowski's F-score. So what is, what is the criteria that are, well, what are the criteria suggested in this case? We have two, the first one being the change in gross margin. So if the gross margin increased compared to the year before, then we would assign a score of one, otherwise zero. And the second one is the change in asset turnover. And I, I do agree with these, these two ratios. I think they do show something about the, the operating efficiency of the company. So I will continue with uh, them and I'll create the score number eight, which would be related to gross margin and score number nine that is related to asset turnover. So by the end of this tutorial, we would have nine scores. So a company can score between zero and nine um, that determines the strength of its financial position. And we're going to add some more additional information such as the PE ratio. Um, we'll see what comes up and what makes sense. But for now, for this tutorial, let's cover these two parts. And later on, we will see what, what to add. So um, I don't actually, Let's leave this. Let's keep printing the leverages and the, the profitability score from the previous tutorial. I'll select one company. So let's do another random selection, 70 to 71. And let's get first the income statement as we need to calculate the gross margin and to see how that changed compared to the year before. So first what we need is the gross margin. But in order to get that, uh, what we need is, oh, perfect. This is not the best uh, choice as we select the Plus B share, so let's have 71, maybe 72. That should be fine. So, income statement. What we're looking for is the gross profit, but we're looking for the gross margin change. So, we need to get the gross profit as well as the. See what we have as total revenue, probably this one. Yeah. So I'm going to copy both of these. So total, let's start with the gross profit. So GP would be equal gross profit and we would have the total revenue. So make sure that one mistake that might happen is if you copy an additional space. So instead of stopping at this point, if you continue, then of course that's not going to be an applicable keyword. Uh, and total, um, should we, can we use, just revenue. It's a bit shorter and uh, sufficient descriptive, in my opinion. So what we need is to access the income statement, the year, and then this gross profit or this total revenue in this case. So I'm not sure we have probably have yeah, this one We've specified it before. So income statement, years, most recent one. So I'm going to add it here in front of both. But since we're looking for the change of gross profit or gross margin in this case, we need also the gross profit of prior year, which would be equal to the exact same, but years being one. And same goes for revenue of prior year, we would have the year before. Now we have all that we need to calculate the gross margin per year and then compare if it has increased or decreased. So. Uh, gross margin, let's go with GM, would be equal to gross profit divided by revenue. And gross margin of previous year would be equal to the gross profit of previous year divided by revenue of the previous or prior year. And now here we can have the gross margin score, which would be equal to one if the gross margin is greater than the gross margin of the previous year, else it would be zero. 
So in these six, seven lines, we have calculated our gross margin score. And well, that's that's sufficient for this part of, of Piotrowski's F score related to operating efficiency. Next part, what we need to cover is the asset turnover. Um, when it comes to the asset turnover, it's a ratio that uh, calculates your the total sales of a company, the total revenue that it generates, and it, it divides that with the assets that the company has. So in my opinion, uh, we can use best would be to use this total revenue and compare it with average assets. And both of those are actually, well, we have them. So um, what we can do is the revenue is already here specified. So we have the revenue for this year or the, the latest year and the year before. Uh, up here we have also the average assets. So I'm going to copy this part here. So we have the average assets and the average assets for the previous year. And I'm going to edit here. So our asset turnover would be equal to the revenue divided by the average assets. And what does this ratio mean? For example, let's say you get a revenue divided by average asset and the answer is uh, the, what you get out as a ratio is two. That means that for every euro or US dollars or whatever currency you're using invested in average asset in the, in the assets, um, the company's generating sales of two. So that would mean a score or a ratio of two. If it's three, of course, the, the higher, the greater. That means that the company is being more productive, creating more sales with the assets that it has. So here, what we need to do is, of course, calculate the asset turnover, which would be equal to revenue divided by the average asset. And what we also need to do is the same for the year before. So revenue. divided by average assets and same for the pre previous year. And now our asset turnover score would be equal to one if the asset turnover is greater than the asset turnover. This would be quite long. I mean, we can probably have AT, asset turnover. And I'll just make sure that it's a bit um, shorter that we don't, it's, you can also, add some comments, 80 being equal to asset turnover. But I, I encourage you to do this for, yeah, if it's already not explained, because maybe you'll take a look at this code sometime later on, and it's good to have some comments that you can easier understand the code. So this would be asset turnover, asset turnover of the previous year, asset turnover score one, if the asset turnover is greater than the asset turnover of previous year, else zero. And now at the end, what we need to do is of course, calculate the operating efficiency score, which is a summary of the gross margin score, what we've calculated and this asset turnover score. And um, I think these two are actually quite, quite nice indicators of whether a company is doing, I would not say good or bad, but if it's better than the year before. So is it, is it making, um, it more, is it creating more sales with the assets that it has in place or and is it how, how is its operating efficiency improving or not improving year over year um let's at the end what we can do is we can print operating efficiency score i think i've spelled it correctly yeah and so once we run it once we run this now what we would expect is of course get the data print the ticker for which the data is being scraped, then run profitability, leverage and operating efficiency functions. And at the end of each, we have printing of the score. This is not, of course, how we're going to do it at the end. It's just to make sure that everything that we've done so far works. Um, we can also have probably profitability score plus a string of profitability score. So we know what is that number related to, and then let's let's also do the same for leverage score plus string of leverage score. And later on, we would like to run it for all S and P five hundred companies, and that will be done in the next or one of the next videos, and we'll have a nice summary that we can rank the companies maybe based on that. And last, operating efficiency. 
last string of the score. So let's run it for another random selection, 90 to 95. It's for five companies. Uh, did I miss? Print operating efficiency. Oh, not equal plus. There's a typo. All right, that looks good. Let's see if this runs properly. All right, so that's the ticker and th those are the scores. And it seems quite okay because we have different profitability scores per unit, so per company that's, that's a plausible, that should be the case. Leverage score also changes and operating efficiency, so we, it goes zero to two, so it looks that it, it works quite well and of course, later on when we are uh, more into the testing and analyzing the data, maybe we'll notice something that's, that's strange and we'll see how to tackle that. But for now, what we have is we have nine scores. The first five are related to the profitability, then next two are related to leverage, liquidity and source of funds, and the last two are related to operating efficiency. And at the end, of course, what we need to do is we need to have a total score that combines all these three that would be between zero and nine. And um, hopefully that will give us some more insights into the company's financial position or the strength of the company's financial position. So that will be all regarding this tutorial. In the next one, what I want to do is I want to cover a few other um, data that are included in this library. And of course, in either in the next video or the video afterwards, I would like to um, summarize all the tickers or all the data for all the tickers and have it in a nice nice layout, a nice summary that can be easily uh, worked with. So thank you for following and I'll see you in the next one.